The 15th of March, 1939. Six months after the annexation of the Sudetenland, a border area of Czechoslovakia containing an ethnic German majority, Nazi Germany, in flagrant violation of the Munich Agreement, invades and occupies the Czech provinces of Bohemia and Moravia. Adolf Hitler himself arrives in Prague, and on the 16th of March, by a proclamation from Prague Castle, establishes the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. In September 1941, Reinhard Heydrich becomes a new acting Reich protector, and he arrives in Prague with his wife, who is a fanatical Nazi. After his assassination one year later, she will remain at her Czech castle, in which to enrich herself, she will use laborers from the Theresienstadt ghetto and Flossenburg concentration camp, and abuse them as if they were her own slaves. Her name is Lina Heydrich. Lena Heydrich was born as Lena Mathilde von Osten on the 14th of June 1911 in Fermann, then part of the German Empire. Her father, Jürgen, was an impoverished German aristocrat of Danish origin who worked as a village schoolteacher and her mother was a housewife. The von Osten family was strongly right-wing oriented and Lena was a convinced national socialist and an ardent anti-Semite already from a young age. In 1927, Lena graduated from school in Oldenburg, and in 1928, she began training as a trade teacher in Kiel. It was at a rowing club ball in Kiel, where two years later on the 6th of December 1930, she met a naval lieutenant who was known as ambitious, arrogant, and having a passion for women. His name was Reinhard Heydrich. The two became romantically involved, and on the 18th of December 1930, less than two weeks later, they announced their engagement. Because Heydrich left the daughter of a senior naval officer to whom he had promised marriage for Lina, a military court of honor, scandalized by his disrespectful behavior during his hearing, found him to have dishonored the officer corps of the Reich Navy and compelled him to resign his commission in April 1931. The dismissal devastated Heydrich, who found himself without career prospects. However, under Lina's influence and that of her deeply nationalistic family, Heydrich, who was initially indifferent to party politics, moved closer to National Socialism. Lina's brother Hans was a member of the Nazi SA since 1928, and Lina herself joined the Nazi party one year later, shortly after she had attended a party rally where Adolf Hitler spoke. Reinhard Heydrich joined the Nazi party and the SS in June and July of 1931. At that time, Heinrich Himmler, chief of the SS, was seeking to create an internal intelligence service for the Nazi party. Himmler agreed to interview Heydrich, but cancelled their appointment at the last minute. Nevertheless, Lina, a fanatical Nazi party follower, ignored this message, packed Heydrich's suitcase, and sent him to Munich. Heinrich Himmler was immediately impressed with Heydrich, who with his blonde hair and blue eyes had the look of a perfect Aryan. Himmler brought him into the SS in August 1931, and in December of the same year, Lina and Heydrich got married. The marriage produced four children, two boys, Klaus and Heider, and two girls, Silke and Marte. At that time, Reinhard Heydrich was working for Himmler, who tasked him with developing the security service, the SD. By January 1933, the SD under Heydrich's leadership had become the most significant intelligence agency within the Nazi party. Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party came into power in January 1933. Soon after their assumption of power, Nazi leaders began to make good on their pledge to persecute German Jews. When Himmler was appointed commander of the Bavarian Political Police Detective Force on the 1st of April 1933, he appointed Heydrich as his deputy. Lina triumphantly described the disempowerment of the Bavarian government and the ongoing waves of arrests in a letter to her parents, in which she also wrote, in the evenings, the SA and SS had their special pleasure. They had the task of arresting all political opponents, as far as they were known, and taking them to the Brown House. That was something for the boys. At last, they were allowed to take revenge for all the injustice inflicted on them, for all the beatings and wounds, and to take revenge for their fallen comrades. More than 200 are now arrested, some of them Jews. The Minister of the Interior stands in the hall in his socks and nightgown, surrounded by a crowd of SA and SS, who don't know where to go because they are laughing. Then they come and step on the crying Minister of the Interior's big toe with their heavy boots, so that he hops from one leg to the other between them. You can imagine the picture. The next to be introduced is the Jew Levy. They make short work of him. 
they beat him with dog whips, take off his shoes and stockings, and so he has to walk barefoot to his home in the company of the SS. Nine days after his appointment as Reichsführer SS and Chief of the German Police on the 17th of June 1936, Himmler appointed Heydrich Chief of the newly established Security Police Main Office, which brought together into one agency the Gestapo, the Secret Police, and the Criminal Police Detective Forces. With this appointment by Hitler, Himmler, and his de facto deputy Heydrich, became two of the most powerful men in the internal administration of Germany. Lena Heydrich did not get on well with Margareta Himmler, Heinrich Himmler's wife. Among other things, she accused her of stinginess, which was apparent in her overly simple housekeeping. Lena Heydrich herself enjoyed the upscale lifestyle that her husband's rising positions afforded them both. On the night of the 9th and 10th of November 1938, the Nazi SA, SS, Hitler Youth and German civilians destroyed Jewish homes, businesses, synagogues, hospitals and schools throughout Germany, annexed Austria, and in areas of the Sudetenland and Czechoslovakia, which had recently been occupied by German troops. 91 Jews were murdered. One of the main organizers of the Kristallnacht pogrom was Reinhard Heydrich. Lena actively stood by her husband and encouraged him to do even more for the Reich. In the following year in 1939, it was Heydrich who converted Salon Kitty, a high-class brothel situated in a wealthy district of Berlin, into an establishment for espionage purposes with hidden cameras and microphones throughout the house. Heydrich had a high sex drive and was a regular visitor to Berlin's brothels, but during his inspection tours of Salon Kitty, all microphones had to be turned off. However, not only Reinhard Heydrich, but also Lena herself, is said to have had several affairs. Because Reinhard Heydrich's duties led him to work long hours and often be away from home, Lena would later recall, I was married to Reinhard Heydrich for ten years. He was not at home for seven of those years. The Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939, when Nazi Germany invaded Poland. After the invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941, a previously dormant communist resistance movement in the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia started acts of sabotage, and Hitler dismissed Reich Protector Konstantin von Neurath, who was sent on leave because of his soft approach to the Czechs, and appointed Heydrich as acting Reich Protector in September 1941. For the family, Heydrich's appointment meant a rise up the social ladder. Until then, he had virtually never taken part in negotiations with Hitler, and had always only been in the shadow of Himmler. As the first representative of the Protectorate, however, he negotiated directly with the Führer, and was, of course, at the top of the power hierarchy in Bohemia and Moravia. When Heydrich arrived in Prague, he told his staff, We will Germanize the Czech vermin. Heydrich first ordered a narrow wave of terror, targeting real and perceived leaders of opposition in the Czech lands. In October and November 1941, Protectorate Special Court sentenced 342 people to death and turned 1,289 over to the Gestapo. Heydrich's brutal policies during that time quickly earned him the nickname the Butcher of Prague. Heydrich also established the Theresienstadt Ghetto, which existed for three and a half years between the 24th of November 1941 and the 9th of May 1945, and served mainly as a transit camp for Jews en route to extermination camps. After her husband's appointment as Deputy Reich Protector of Bohemia and Moravia, the family moved from the Prague castle in which they had lived for a few months to the luxurious and idyllic castle Panenske Bzezhani near Prague, which had already been taken away from its Jewish owner, Ferdinand Bloch Bauer, after the German invasion, and was now redesigned much to Lena Heydrich's satisfaction. As the protector's spouse, Lena enjoyed a status that her impoverished aristocratic parents could never dream of. Of this time, Lena later wrote, I am a princess, and I live in a fairy tale land. Heydrich was so confident that his pacification program in the Protectorate had succeeded that he flagrantly disregarded measures for his own security and travelled around Prague in an open vehicle. On the 27th of May 1942, Heydrich was in his convertible Mercedes when the Czechoslovak paratroopers Josef Gabčik and Jan Kubisch succeeded in rolling a hand grenade under Heydrich's transport vehicle and wounding the Nazi architect of the Holocaust. Soon after, with his face pale and screaming in pain, Heydrich was taken to the emergency room at a hospital. He developed a fever and wound drainage, and was in great pain. 
Though not mortally wounded by the blast itself, the grenade splinters in his leg and lower back led to an infection that killed the 38-year-old Heydrich on the 4th of June, 1942. Because of her pregnancy, Lena did not attend the funeral, and their fourth child, a daughter named Marte, was born on the 23rd of July, 1942, shortly after Reinhard Heydrich's death. In recognition of her husband's service to the Nazi cause, especially in coordination of the final solution of the Jewish question, which was the code name for the systematic, deliberate, and physical annihilation of the European Jews, Hitler gave Lena Heydrich the castle in Panenska Bjezhani. She was also granted a large lifetime pension, as well as an insurance policy which turned her into a wealthy woman. A playground and a swimming pool was built, and Lena decided to destroy the English park with its rare trees. She sold the wood and planted potatoes and other vegetables there, which she then sold to the German troops in Prague. In order to run her business, she needed workers, and in the castle grounds, she set up a miniature labor and concentration camp, where around 150 prisoners from the Theresienstadt ghetto lived in former stables and worked for Lena Heydrich under miserable conditions. They received little food, and witnesses said that she physically abused them and treated her Jewish forced laborers badly. According to later testimonies, she observed the workers with binoculars and had SS guards whip those who worked too slowly. She spat on or beat Jewish forced laborers when their behavior did not seem properly respectful to her. It was not until February 1944 that the prisoners from the Theresienstadt ghetto stopped serving in Panenska Bjezhani altogether. Lena Heydrich, however, extorted at least some compensation from Himmler. From Flossenburg, she got a group of 15 Jehovah's Witnesses. She repeatedly refused requests from their home concentration camp at Flossenburg to pay properly for their rent. The matter eventually went so far that Himmler himself began to make payments on her behalf from his own account. On the 24th of October, 1943, Klaus, one of Heydrich's four children, died as a result of a traffic accident when he was cycling with his brother Heider in the courtyard of the castle Banetska Bjezhani. Seeing that the gate to the street was open, Klaus rode out onto the street where he was struck by a small truck coming down the road. Right after the accident, a Jewish doctor who was in the castle work group gave the boy first aid, but the injuries were fatal and Klaus died later that afternoon. Lena decided to bury Klaus in the castle garden and the grave was dug by Jewish prisoners. However, on the eve of the funeral, Lena decided that the final resting place for her Aryan child must not be dug by Jews and by the morning, German soldiers had dug and decorated a new grave. Lena then wanted to have the driver Karl Kaspar and all the passengers shot, but the investigation found the driver not guilty. After the war, one eyewitness recalled having seen Lena Heydrich standing with the guests in front of the entrance to the castle and saying, Das ist alles meine, meaning, that's all mine. However, she was wrong. The family lived in the castle until April 1945, when they, along with many other Germans, left the area to flee the advancing Soviet Red Army. Before leaving, she had rabbits, geese, and chickens slaughtered, and she took the jars of preserved meat with her. She shook hands with each of the castle staff and promised them a pension as she believed she would return to her castle. However, she never did. In the second half of 1945, Lena finally arrived with her children in her native Fairman. In 1948, the Czechoslovak Extraordinary People's Court sentenced her to life imprisonment in absentia. For two years, Lena had to hide from the authorities for fear that she might be extradited to Czechoslovakia. However, the British authorities eventually refused the Czechoslovak government's request to extradite Lena Heydrich to Czechoslovakia. During the following decade, Lena had only a limited income. Her house in Fairman, which had been temporarily confiscated by the British after the war, was returned to her. She repeatedly applied for a general's pension, even though Heydrich, as an SS general, was not a soldier according to the German authorities, but a war criminal. Eventually, however, she was granted a widow's pension. In 1965, she met Finnish theatre director Mauno Maninen, whom she married for the purpose of changing her last name. Lena then ran Reinhard Heydrich's former summer house in Fermann as a restaurant and inn. A significant part of its clientele were former supporters of the Nazi regime who reminisced about the good old days. However, the restaurant burned down in February 1969. Her husband, Mauno Maninen, died in September of the same year. In 1976, she published a memoir named Life with a War Criminal. 
She repeatedly recalled the period of her life in the Protectorate with nostalgia, and even at the end of her life, she showed no remorse and refused to admit any guilt of her husband for Nazi crimes. About the atrocities in the Nazi camps, she said, it was all a fairy tale. When Lena died in Fermann on the 14th of August, 1985, she was 74 years old. In 1979, six years before her death, she said, National Socialism was a faith, and I can never renounce this faith. There were no tears shed for Lena Heydrich. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.